as Boris Badenov would say with a heavy Russian accent, allow me to introduce myself. I am Stanley Chang, an 88-year-old child prodigy. I make inventions. This is my latest invention, a perfectly floating, free-floating soundboard harp. At my age, I do not need the money or the fame. So I do not intend to patent my invention. I'm going to give it away free to all harp makers. So this is a video that I'm going to be putting onto a DVD and mail it to all the major and minor harp makers in the world. It is in the public domain and you can make as many copies as you like. You can share it with any people you like and don't you try to patent it because I have invented it. Today is the 28th of April, I'm um, sorry, <laughs> the 28th of September 2016 and I will be describing in my video that will follow this about this harp and its construction. The idea is really very, very simple. It is to add a relief spine behind the soundboard directly behind the uh, holes for the harp strings to come through. And so the relief spine will take up all the force by all the harp strings. Therefore, the soundboard will be absolutely free to float. So, I enjoyed the video and share it with anybody you want. It is in the public domain. This is my new soundboard installed but not attached except at the very top where you can see that one screw that screw took an hour to put in. The reason why I'm not attaching it right now is because I want to prove that once the strings are on, there's no pull on the soundboard outward. Here is the relief spine installed into the frame. And you can see the new soundboard and the old soundboard in the background. Now a close-up of the relief spine 
you can see tiny little screws on both sides of the spine they are the attachment point for the end of the heart strings and they alternate left to right so as to balance the force on the relieved spine so that it will remain straight. And the next thing I will do is to cover this with a new soundboard. You can see the attachment of the relief spine at the top and then at the bottom. They are securely attached. This is a view of the soundboard installed and it is free floating. There are no screws on the bottom. It is free floating and there is only one screw at the top. You can see that one screw right there. The rest of it is completely free floating. All the holes for the strings with eyelets have been installed. Now I'm going to turn the thing around to show it to you from the back. Now this is the view of the free floating har uh, soundboard harp from the back. And you can see at the bottom there's a metal bracket and it will hold the relief spine which I will show you next. And at the top you will see a bracket which will hold the top of the relief spine. There it is. And so the relief spine is the only thing that is attached to the frame. Now I'm going to install the relief spine and show it to you once it is installed. Okay, now the relief spine has been installed. Uh, you can see it here at the bottom. And we can show it a little larger. And it goes all the way up to the top. And there is a bracket holding it up at the top. There's a wood piece with the holes for mounting the bottom ends of the harp string sandwiched by two heavy steel bars. And when I install the harp strings, they will be installed alternately left 
and right. So now I'm going to string it and that will take some time. You can see that there are no strings out there at all. So next next thing I will show is after it's string, but that may be a very long time. Okay, this is not the video that I promised. There has been a gap. There has been many failures between the previous thing and this thing. So what I'm going to show you now are some of the failures. You may remember seeing this piece of wood. I'm running up and down. This was the relief spine, the first design. It failed because at the very top, at the very top there, it broke. And next to it is the steel bar which supported the wood but it did not extend full length as you can see is shorter and so that failed on the next try which is shown right here on uh, this bar, what I did was to make this bar into a frame which at the bottom runs across the bottom of the harp from the front to the back and then vertically run along the back and I was using these steel wires that you can see right here to connect between this bar and the soundboard. Well, you, you don't see it now, but all those 36 steel wires ran across from the back to the soundboard and this bar proved not to be strong enough and it bent it bent very badly so that one failed so I went back to the relief spine, which is this one right here, the next try, and went back to simply the steel bar by itself without the wood. So I had to drill holes into the steel bar itself. Well, it failed because, by golly, this steel bar looks like it's strong enough, but it wasn't. It twisted and bent. And so that was a failure. I will show you the success in a moment. Now next to that one is my attempt at the soundboard. And this was the soundboard that I showed in the previous video. But what I did 
was that I made these two curly cues. And the idea being that since I don't need the holes in the back of the harp anymore, I can let the sound come out the front like in a uh, double bass violin, you know, the one that you play standing up. So that was the idea. But look what happened. What happened is that if you count the string holes, there are 11 of them down here and the rest are above. So basically, the curly cues I made cut the soundboard in half. You know, about one quarter of the strings are down below and then three quarter of the strings are up above. So those are the failures. Now, let me go back to the harp and oh, wrong way. Okay, so there's the harp. And let me first of all describe what the idea was. The idea originally is that you have these harp strings running vertically down and then you have this soundboard which is diagonal and I measured it the angle between the strings vertically and a soundboard running diagonally is 33 degrees. And with the 26 harp strings pulling on the soundboard, it is pulling the soundboard up. And so on the soundboard, the effect is that there's a force running up the soundboard and then there is a sound, there is a uh, force running perpendicular to the soundboard away from the soundboard. So the problem is that on uh, all harps, the problem is that there will be a bulge in a soundboard outward right about here. And with age, that soundboard might crack or break. So what I've created is what I call a perfectly free-floating soundboard. And the idea is to counteract the force of the strings on the soundboard by a relief spine behind the soundboard to take up all the forces. So basically there is no force on the soundboard at all. And I will show you what I mean. So I'm going to turn my harp, by the way, this is the new soundboard, and you notice there's no curly cue. And I'm going to turn the thing around and show you the back. So if I'm not steady, it's going to be a little wobbly, okay? Well, I can't quite reach the harp, so I have to stand up. Hmm. 
Now here is the soundboard shown on its back. And you will see what well, you saw the, the there's the piano hinge uh, on the left and then there are five latches on the right. And I'm going to open the five latches and show you what's inside. So just hold on. Okay. All right, now, here's what that looks like. You can see the relief spine and is now a much heavier steel bar. It is a quarter inch thick and one and a half inch wide and 40 inches long. And you can see as I run down that alternately there are clips left, right, left, right, left, right, and all that, and all the way down to the bottom. And then it's attached at the bottom with brackets, and you did see it was attached up on the top. Move to one side. You then can you can then see. Wait a minute. Let me get a little bit further. You can see that alternately. They go left and right and left and right. That's so that they balance. And you can see the soundboard. And you can see the harp string coming through the hole in the soundboard and going down to the nail on the edge of the relief spine. So the idea is very simple. You'll notice that the harp string here behind the soundboard runs straight down in exactly the same direction as the harp string above the soundboard. Okay, uh, maybe I can show that uh, if I back up. And you can barely, well, maybe not. But here you are, you know, look at the strings outside in front and the strings inside. And you can see that I have a line. I have aligned the strings inside also as 33 degrees. So the uh, the um, the harp strings goes from the top at the tuning at the tuning pin down to the back of the relief spine with only an interruption through the eyelid eyelet at the soundboard. That means that there is no force on the soundboard at all. It is perfectly free to float. So let me turn the harp again so you will excuse me. Okay, here we go. Now on this view, you can see that the soundboard is separated from the frame. 
You see, there's a gap here. It is freely floating. There's absolutely no force on the soundboard and it is held in place by one screw oops one screw up here at the top and one screw down at the bottom that's all it floats and what is fascinating is that you can see a gap and the reason for the gap is that there is an eyelet and so the string make a zigzag at the eyelet and because of the zigzag the soundboard has to find its own equilibrium and the equilibrium is slightly above where it originally was. But what is interesting is that there is a gap on the right side here and when you saw oops and when you saw the uh, heart from the other side you remember that there is no gap there. And the reason for the tilt is right here. The neck of the soundboard is tilted to one side. Uh, by the way, this is called the neck. This curvy part. And the vertical support is called the post. And the reason why the neck is tilted to the right is because all the strings are on the left side of the neck. And so the soundboard being perfectly free floating would then have to tilt to the left and so the right side here is separated from the frame and the left side is not. And so that is what a perfectly free floating soundboard harp looks like. And I've shown you all the failures and I've shown you the success. So let me get that around again and give you an another view at, at this. So there is the relief spine and there are the harp strings coming through the soundboard going to the back of the relief spine alternately um, left and right and at 33 degrees so that oh yeah here you can see the harp strings runs down and uh, in, uh, outside of the um, soundboard and they run down in the same direction inside behind the soundboard and that is the principle of the thing and since there is this gap which you saw earlier you don't need the holes on the back anymore and so I've closed the back completely and put it on a piano hinge so that I can open it 
and be able to work on the harp strings on the relief spine. And as I said before, the relief spine is a quarter inch thick steel, one and a half inch wide, and 40 inches long. And that ends my description. Thank you for viewing. Well, here I am again, without the benefit of a Boris Badenov introduction. As you can see, I don't have my Prototype 1 harp with me. I gave it to my beta tester yesterday, Dr. Vanessa Sheldon, a professional harpist, and she will be playing it in the next video I will show you. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vanessa. Thank you. tell you, having a professional, it makes us sound so much better. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, that was Dr. Vanessa Sheldon playing my harp for me. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>